We are going to focus on JJ Reddick's transition shots, and I want you to pay attention to a few specific details. Number one, his hands are always ready to catch the ball. Two, notice how he's not going 100% full speed at all times. Instead, he's waiting to pick his spot based on how the pass is thrown to him or how the defense is playing. And most importantly, watch how he times out his footwork into a left-right motion or a quick hop together. Next is the floppy action. A floppy action is when there is a down screen happening on both sides of the floor and the shooter can choose either direction to go. Reddick is making contact with his defender before using the first initial screen. This allows him to use the screen more effectively by giving himself more space and therefore more time to get his shot off. Once Reddick creates separation, he doesn't wait for his defender to catch up as he doesn't want to lose his advantage he has created. We will go over the different ways defenses try to defend this action and the respective counters Reddick makes. Lowry doesn't allow him to use the screen and force them over the top. Reddick counters by simply going the other way. Pay attention how he still pushes Lowry into the screen even though he is going back over the top. He ends up in the same ending spot but just takes an alternate path because how the defense was guarding him. A small but important thing to notice is as he's running, he's peeking behind him to see which way his defender is chasing him so he can make his respective reads. And in this one, he chooses to fade out because Lowry tries to jump the screen. Another way defenses try to disrupt the floppy screen is to face guard by blocking the offensive player from using the screen left or right. Joe Harris has his back facing the sideline. Instead of starting a wrestling match, Reddick simply takes what the defense gives him and sprints to the open spot on the other side of the floor. Reddick has great awareness and knows Harris will be chasing him, so he uses Harris's aggressiveness against him by getting him to bite with a good old underrated ball fake. Missed a ton of games. Health has always been the major headline with it. This floppy action is a textbook example of why you need to be in great physical condition and shape, especially as a shooter. Notice how he doesn't break his momentum at all as he is running. And as they say, the harder you work, the luckier you get. In any handoff scenario, the shot is much harder to make than a regular spot up shot because of the difficulty of shooting on the move while maintaining speed and balance throughout the course of the shot. For example, it's much easier to make a layup standing right under the rim as opposed to running full speed at the basket. With the handoff, there are variables you do have to consider. 1. If you should dribble or not. 2. Which pivot should you be using? And 3. Is the defense playing so aggressively that you need to counter back in the same direction you came in my opinion, a straight catch and shoot off the handoff with no dribble is more common in transition, out of the post, or at the end of the shot clock. Although I don't have clips for transition handoffs here, I do have video reps of possible shots out of the mid post. Therefore, I would allocate my reps to being in transition towards the top half of the three point arc and off the mid post towards the corners. In the half court, I would say you're more likely to use one dribble or multiple dribbles if you were playing a two-man game handoff with the big man. So your reps should follow accordingly, and maybe start your movement from the wings or the corners as opposed to starting at half court like we would with a no dribble catch and shoot handoff. And now the question we've all been waiting for. As far as pivot foots are concerned, my simple rule of thumb, and of course there are exceptions, but whichever direction you're coming from to use your inside foot as your pivot foot, or practicing using two feet at the same time, which I personally call a quick hop gather. You can see when Reddick is coming from the left side of the floor, he uses his inside foot, left foot, as his pivot, and when he comes from the right side of the floor, he uses his inside foot, or right foot, as his pivot. to get the crowd back into it and give it a box that I have a lot of rest. Reddick to Embiid, nearly took that one in the noggin. Reddick finds everybody's in help position to protect it. There's a difference between overplaying and cheating to me. If the defense is overplaying, they are still allowing you to complete the handoff, but they are aggressive in trying to disrupt the handoff or beat you to the spot. In that situation, a great drill is to use your inside pivot the same way, but instead of going for the shot, swing your other leg that is not the pivot in the direction that you just came from. 
In this example, Redick is coming from the right side of the floor. So he uses his right foot to pivot and swings back his left leg back to the right side of the floor to create an advantage. The Sixers and also keeping them out of transition, forcing them into that half court game. When the defense cheats the play, they don't even allow you to get the handoff. Redick again doesn't get caught up in this wrestling match where he forces himself to use the handoff. He simply reacts to whatever the defense does by getting physical with the defender, gives a small push and back pedals or sidesteps back to the open area. I want to repeat, watch how he makes contact to create space. JJ Redick. Assistant messaging from Coach Atkinson to his Nets team. Look, they got to kick out a way to get him a little bit more involved offensively, much like the stage here, and gives a shove to Boban. If Redick notices there's not a good angle to get the pass, and he has an offensive teammate on his side, he can direct the ball handler to pass to his teammate. When the teammate then receives the ball, he can be the one to pass to Redick in the open area. We are getting to the same end result but we are just creating a better angle to receive the pass. It's essentially a give and go to himself. A new trend in the last few years has been shooters setting slip screens and sprinting out to create confusion and therefore separation for a three point shot. Sometimes it still looks like a traditional handoff, but as you will see, Redick moves with deception by stopping like he's going to set a ball screen, but then immediately changes his speed by sprinting to create separation for a three point jump shot. Play in the first quarter. Brooklyn shooting 45%. Philly think about who's going where this upcoming offseason plays. Boy, he has been needed. All 17 of his points in the quarter. Shot clock down to 10. Marjanovic hands off to Red. After you get the shooting fundamentals down, the two most underrated things a shooter does extremely well is relocate and cuts off the ball. Relocation is very important because number one, the shooter is giving himself more space to shoot by sneaking or moving to an open area where the defender now has a longer way to go and contest the shot. Number two, it is easier to create a better angle for the passer. This is especially important as you can catch the basketball in rhythm leading to a higher percentage shot, as opposed to not moving and making the pass extremely difficult for the teammate passing the ball, which could lead to a turnover or an out of rhythm catch before the shot. Simmons, a on the fly, gets his own miss, out to Reddick, three, Three. Feedback from the officials. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> I want to draw your attention to a very important concept. When the ball is low or your teammate is driving the ball to the basket, watch your defender's eyes as they invariably are not focused on you and they are watching the ball. Once you notice this, this is when you move or relocate to the open spot. It is early, a part of his senior year, sixth season in Philadelphia. Turnover this year. Going with a small backcourt of Lowry and Van Vliet. Scraping at it. Redick. Philadelphia finished number four in scoring in the NBA. Joe Harris will greet him. Harris is only three of 11 today, and again, having a tough time scoring. Tend to shoot. We're going to watch as this series unfolds. The producer, Bert Bondi, Rich Russo, our director, rest of our TNT crew. Quickly, for the relocation of overplays, this just means if you know your opponent is an aggressive defender or has been trying very hard on defense the whole game, you know that once you relocate, he's going to be so out of position that he's going to sprint full speed and be out of control in the closeout. This is when you can practice different ways to counter the defensive aggressiveness, and as you can see, J.J. Redick has been seen in his whole career and mixes it up different counters depending on where he is on the floor and who is guarding him. Getting a lot of precise work in. Redick, yes! On the pin side, if they have a lot of really good players. Redick, nice. Charmer weaves his way through traffic. Reddick, the fake got in too, but he's carrying a lot of weight. With Reddick, Manu now has 36. 
Back to Texas. They go inside with the inbound to Butler and outside Reddick. It's a three, and it's good. How good has this pump fake's been? IQ and awareness is a great separator from good shooters to great shooters. I'm just going to run through some clips and explain real time what Reddick is probably thinking. I apologize if the commentary is sloppy, or maybe he is thinking something different. I just want to give you some things to think about and maybe help you insert some creativity or different thoughts in your game. Also, awareness is very important, and I'm going to point out some things that I notice when JJ plays. The ball's in the post, so I see an opportunity for my shot, but he closes out, so I give it back to the post. Go away, see what the defense is doing. I see there's another opportunity to shoot, so I'm going up with it. Next, my defender falls, look quickly back, shoot. Next one, Dinwiddie is trailing pretty hard, so I just curl back where I came from with the jump shot. Again, Dinwiddie is ultra aggressive, so I know he's going to go for this ball fake, and then I'm going to shoot it. This next one, Lowry is being very aggressive. I'm going right to the rim because there's no help. Next one, I'm going to be keep cutting back door. On the right side, I'm going right left, and on the left side, I'm going left right. I played with a great shooter in Joe Licata. His famous quote he loves to say is shoot to get hot, shoot to stay hot. As a shooter, you have to have the ultimate confidence the next shot is going in. It's easier said than done when you miss 10 in a row and you start feeling peer pressure from your teammates by their frustration verbally or by looking at their body language and sensing the anxiousness of the crowd when the misses keep piling up. However, as a shooter, it is truly a next shot mentality. And if you put the preparation and work in, you truly have to ignore the noise. When you put in the hard work, that confidence will come and it's up to you to carry it over to the game when the lights turn on and give yourself the ultimate green light. Well, if your coach is let you. But just watch when Reddick shoots the ball, there is zero hesitation because in his mind he knows that if he has an inch of space, the ball is going up and he expects every shot to go in. So Redick, got it. 